Hey guys, Katja here with the Village Mercantile. Wanted to talk about adding moisture to your horse's diet. Um, in these hot months to come and the hot days that have been, um, it's always a good idea to watch your horse's water intake. And um, some horses kind of stop drinking water when they're hot, they're not feeling great. Um, so there's a few ways you can actually add moisture in their diet. Um, I'm a big fan of this uh, if it's really, really hot or actually even in the winter time too. Um, so I wanted to start with a few products that you can add if you're not already feeding. Um, most horse people are familiar with beet pulp, but not everybody's had to feed it or has seen it fed or even knows how to feed it. Um, it's a pelleted product. It's a great fiber source. Um, it has to be fed soaked. So you cannot feed this dry. And what's really neat about it is about two big handfuls of those pellets is what's in this bag or in this bucket soaked. And as you can see, it's very fibrous. It's very wet. Um, it's usually pretty palatable. Um, everybody kind of has their own little ways of soaking. The manufacturer actually only recommends to soak it for about 30 minutes for issues with mold or uh, fermentation. Um, I find that works great if you use warm water, um, but I'm not a huge fan. I usually let it soak a little longer. Um, but again, everybody's... Um, case is going to be a little bit different because it can ferment and get funky uh, and kind of sour if it's too hot outside. Um, but usually the way I like to prep it is for the horse's evening feeding, I prep it in the morning. And then for the horse's morning feeding, I prep it in the evening. So I have a constant kind of rolling um, beet pulp uh, train, if you will. And usually the ratio with beet pulp is about two to three parts water, one part beet pulp. Um, but you can play around with the ratios also if you need to add more moisture. I find I actually like this consistency just because when you move it, you can see the water coming out, but the horse can eat it without it being too soupy. Um, but this is, you can make it soupier and add your horse's grain to it. Um, you just got to keep out, keep an eye out for mold and smelling it. Um, like I said, this was actually a 30 minute soak with warm water. It's already cooled off quite a bit. You can get it started with hot or warm water and then add cool. Um, once it's completely come apart um, You just want to make sure that there's no really big chunks of pellets even if the pellets are smaller It's okay, but uh, I like to I don't like to feed it till it's completely uh, dissolved um, our next beet pulp product is um, It actually comes from England uh, Speedy beet and fiber beet um, Here's a little sample bag as you can see what it looks like beforehand. This is the um, The speedy beet. It's just plain beet pulp um, it's unique because it's flattened out like that. There's such little pieces that it's considered kind of a quick soak. All these products have actually been soaking the same amount of time. This was done in like 10 minutes, uh, especially with warm water. You don't have to use warm water. You can use cold, but it's just a faster process. It's actually a cleaner product. Uh, you can see the water kind of is a little bit cleaner, but the pieces are also smaller. And again, you can add as much or uh, water as you want to make it as liquidy or little more solid um, again you just want to make sure that all the pieces are completely dissolved um, so these two products are just a straight um, beet pulp it's actually low in sugar because it's um, all the sugar has been extracted from the beets um, so that's what's left over so it's just a really good fibrous product the um, fiber beets a little bit different it's got alfalfa and oat hay added to it um, and a little bit of peppermint extract so it's really palatable um, it's a little finer in consistency. Um, I'm actually a big fan of this because the, the horses really, really like it. And I feed, personally, I feed grass and alfalfa. And uh, anytime I switch to this product, I actually lessen the amount of alfalfa I feed the horses um, because I'm replacing it with that. Um, next, you can actually soak your cubes or your pellets. Um, again, all these products have been... Uh, Scudo's hungry. Uh, have been soaking for 30 minutes. I love soaking cubes um, because, and this was done in just cold water, the, the, the pieces of hay in it are larger than what you find in pellets. And I mean, it just creates this awesome mash. Um, and you can see a 30 minute soak. Basically, there's still some pieces of cube in here. But I mean, for the most part, a horse with no teeth could like just completely devour this stuff. A lot of times the cubes, um, we have actually at the store, we have a straight alfalfa, we have an alfalfa timothy, and then we have a straight timothy uh, cube as well. 
And so this is something you could easily, again, if you're feeding alfalfa, you can cut back however many pounds of alfalfa you were feeding um, in flakes, then you can just replace with the, with the cubes. Or if your horse needs to gain weight, you can add, obviously just add to it. But um, in here you can kind of see some of them didn't soak up completely. Um, I didn't put very much water. Um, again, you can adjust the ratio, um, but it's very palatable, very easy for the horses to chew. And again, you can throw, you know, if you have, if your horse is on senior grain or whatever other grain, throw it in there as well. Um, here are pellets, um, regular hay pellets. Uh, as you can see, they're really dense, so they don't soak up as much water. So I'm a bigger fan of the cubes because I put basically the same amount of water, it's been the same amount of soak time, and you can see that uh, your horse would have a harder time picking up as much moisture out of this. But you could let it soak a little longer, but again, in the summertime, you got to be careful with all these products molding or fermenting. Um, but again, you can soak, you can soak hay, you can soak any grain that they're on. Um, adding salt is a great way to increase their want for water consumption. Whether you're putting like a teaspoon on their feed, make sure they've got a salt block is a really good way also. Um, and just remember any switches that you're making to their diet, between five and 10 days, you wanna take it slow and easy, make sure they don't colic. But a lot of times, especially if you're using um, cubes or pellets, it's a relatively easy switch because they're already on some sort of forage. Um, but if you guys have any questions, uh, stop by or give us a call. Thanks so much.